Hey everybody, Michael Park here, and in this tutorial I'm going to spread a little holiday cheer by showing you how to create some cool 3D text inside of Adobe Photoshop, then take that text and bring it into After Effects and incorporate that into a stylized 3D holiday scene. So let's get started. Here we are inside of Photoshop, and the first thing I want to do is to create a new image by selecting File New. I'm going to call this Merry Christmas Text. Now the important thing here is to make this image the size of the composition you're going to want to have in After Effects. And let's click OK. Now the next thing we want to do is create our text. Now one thing to note, it's important to know what text you're using in case you want to do something a little later on inside of After Effects and match the text up. So I'm going to use Alaska Extra Bold. I'm going to set the size to 150 and set the color to kind of a, a dark red. Let's click inside our window here and type Merry Christmas. Next thing we need to do is just position this kind of where we're going to want it in our final scene. I'm going to put it up here kind of above the halfway point and just accept the settings. Now what we need to do is turn this text into a 3D element. And the way we're going to do that is by having the layer selected and choosing 3D Repousse. Now I think that's how you pronounce it it's French for hammered metal or something like that, but uh, anyway, that's what we're looking for. And as you can see, the only thing we can select here is text layer. Once you select that, you're going to get this warning that says you're going to rasterize this layer before you proceed. Just click yes. And now what you'll see is some dialog box pop up and the text will automatically go 3D. Now you've got a bunch of settings here you can play with, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm simply going to stick with the simple extrusion here, and I want the depth to be a little shallower than that. That's pretty deep. I'm going to set my depth to about 0.3. Now there's also some crazy stuff you can do here. You can assign different materials to the different sides. I'm just going to leave mine alone as is with the kind of the overall red color all the way around. I'm going to select OK. And the final thing we need to do is simply save this out as a Photoshop file. I'm going to call mine Merry Christmas Text as a PSD and click Save. Okay, let's hop over to After Effects. And as you can see, the only thing I've brought into this new project is a couple trees. And we need to bring in our Photoshop file. So I'm going to double click here inside the project window, navigate to where I've saved my file, mine's on the desktop, and change the import as to composition. That's important. Click Open. And now you can see Import Kind Composition. We want to have the Editable Layer Styles option clicked. That's not as important as having live Photoshop 3D. This must be clicked, which allows us to kind of manipulate that text in 3D inside After Effects. And let's click OK. As you can see, this has created two new things. One is a folder with a couple layers in it from our Photoshop file, and the other is a composition. If we double click that to open it up, you can see we've basically recreated exactly what was in Photoshop. Here's our Photoshop, here's After Effects. Same size, same everything. We have a camera in here so we can rotate around the 3D text, and it's truly 3D text, which is great. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this white background. We don't really need it. And what we can do is start manipulating the text a little bit. I'm going to want to put some text in front of this to match up, just to kind of demonstrate a couple things. First of all, that the settings work really well uh, going from Photoshop to After Effects. Uh, and the second thing is you can basically create new text and recolor everything uh, on the front inside After Effects and create some really cool effects like if you wanted to texturize or do anything like that, um, this will allow you to do that. So let's go ahead and grab the text tool. And as you can see, I already have the font, which I told you was important to remember, as Alaska Extra Bold. I've set it to 150 pixels, which are the exact same settings that we had inside Photoshop. I'm simply going to click in here and type in Merry Christmas. Now let's simply move this up and put it in front of our text. And we can zoom in here to make sure that it's lined up properly. And if you grab the Move tool, you can use the arrow keys to just kind of line this up so it looks exactly dead on and I think that's pretty darn close. Now what we can do is really reaching, you know, recolor this to whatever we want. We can have it black, white, kind of somewhere in between, change it to green if you want to get really festive. I'm going to stick somewhere in the red here and we can always adjust this later, but uh make it kind of a a 
muted out red color and click OK. If you wanted to, you could add, you know, like I said, texture to this or anything else. Uh, but this just is a nice way to make sure that um, you got the ultimate functionality out of this method. We also need to make this a 3D layer so that when we rotate our camera around, um, the layer rotates with it and it may stays there in front, which is exactly what we want. All right, on to populating our world with some Christmas trees. Let's go ahead and create a new composition. And this composition I'm going to call Tree Precomp uh, Source. And I'm going to make this a width of 300 and a height of 800. I only need it to be two frames long, uh, and you'll see why in a second. And we'll click OK. To this, let's add our tree outlines. Just grab them and drop them in. And we only need these to be one frame long each, so we can simply have these layers selected and hit Alt in bracket to trim these to one frame a piece and we can just stagger them in the timeline here so one is on one frame and the other is on the other which is what we need. Let's turn on our title action safe and we want to line these tree trunks or the bottom of the trees up with the middle of our composition here and that's because we're going to use these as a custom particle and if we didn't line these up in the middle, Particular would basically set the particle according to the middle of the particle texture source and it looked like the trees were kind of half buried under the layer that we're going to emit them from and that just wouldn't work really well for us. So uh, let's adjust the second one here too. These are the things you learn if you work with Particular enough and believe me I have. Uh, just, just double checking to make sure that our trees don't get clipped off anywhere in the top of this and I think we're good. Let's hop back over into our main composition here and let's create the ground plane from which we're going to emit our trees. Let's choose Layer, New, Solid. And I'm going to make this a width of 2,000 and a height of 2,000. We'll call this Ground Plane. But the color doesn't matter. Just click OK. Now the first thing I want to do is actually pre-compose this layer. So choose Layer, Pre-Compose. We want to leave all attributes in Merry Christmas text. Call this Ground Plane Pre-Comp and that's very important to leave the attributes and click open new composition. The reason why we're doing this is we want to use this layer as a color source for our particles and to do that you need to have it pre-composed so that any effects that you apply here uh, particular will read in the other composition. I hope that makes sense. We want to basically recolor this so let's add effect generate ramp this will just give us a black to white ramp and I want the white down here but I want this black to go to kind of a dark red so let's just select that color and change it to a nice deep dark red and click OK. Let's hop back over into our main composition and make this a 3D layer then hit W to grab the rotate tool and rotate this 90 degrees it's easier to snap if you hit the shift button while you're doing that let's hit V to select the move tool and just kind of drop this down so it's kind of a nice ground plane and maybe we can even push it back a little bit like so. Okay, next let's make our trees. Let's choose layer, new, solid and we're going to call this particular trees. Make sure it's comp size, the color really doesn't matter and click OK. Next let's add effect, trap code, particular. Now what we're going to do is change some of these settings with the emitter first of all. We don't want the emitter type to be point. We want this to be a layer because we want all these trees to be emitted off our ground plane. We also want to turn the velocities all down to zero and the emitter size down to zero as well. Now we've basically reached our layer emitter dialog box here. We'll just throw that down and from layer we'll choose ground plane precomp. We want the layer sampling to be particle birth time and the layer RGB usage to RGB particle color, which is exactly what we want. Let's give ourselves a little more room to work here on the timeline. And what we're going to do is set the middle, middle particles per second from 100 up to 7500 and make a keyframe by clicking the stopwatch. Hit page down to move down one frame and turn that all the way down to zero. Now if you scrub through the timeline you can't really see anything because the particles have been emitted uh, but they're the same color as a ground plane. You just turn that ground comp off you can see we have our particles here. Turn the transparency on. They're all spread out all over our uh, ground plane here which is what we want. Um, let's go ahead and turn those into Christmas trees. Drop down here to the particle settings 
let's turn the life up to at least 10 seconds so it's longer than our composition which is 7 seconds long and let's change the particle type from sphere to sprite fill and this way we can fill the texture with the color of the ground plane from where it's emitted we also need to tell it what texture to use and we need to drop in our tree precomp source so basically drop that down in and we can just turn that off so you don't have to see it come back here to our particular settings and change the layer to tree precomp source and change the time sampling from current time to random still frame so it just randomly will sample a frame let's increase the size maybe about 60 or so and we can turn our ground comp back on looks like a kind of a nice uh, shady snow effect if you want more trees that's no problem you can come back here and just jack that up maybe 12,500 or so gives us just a nice forest and then if you want to bring our text forward and make it look like it's you know closer than the trees you can simply drop the particular trees below the Merry Christmas text and that will pull everything forward and just bring your ground comp plane down here too so now it looks like the Merry Christmas is in front of our trees um, I think I want to bring the ground plane down a little bit though because it's given us a little bit of a, a black line here at the bottom and that's not what we want next thing I want to do is create a nice background element so let's choose layer new solid we we'll simply call this BG for background the color doesn't matter because we're going to add effect generate ramp and once again we're gonna have this ramp from white to this kind of a nice dark red color just kinda of match the other look that we have in our scene and drop this layer all the way to the bottom we don't need it to be uh, 3D because it's just gonna stay like that now let's really spice this up by adding in some snow and to do that you guessed it we're gonna use particular let's add new solid layer we'll call this snow make it comp size and click OK and to this let's add effect trap code particular now what we want to do here is turn this into a box emitter from a point emitter like so and we want to make the velocity basically all these down to zero once again and the emitter size is what we're going to adjust to make sure we cover our entire sky so the X spreads it out in the X direction obviously so we want to make that pretty big maybe 2000 and you want to make it bigger than your composition because you're gonna have it go back in Z space too and you want to make sure that you don't have like a box look to the sky when the snows falling so you want to make that a lot wider than your comp you can always increase this later on if you need to emitter Z is the Z depth and we want to increase that up quite a bit too we'll pump that up to 2000 as well and when you push that all the way up to 2000 it brings these particles close to the camera so you can push it back in Z space till you get uh, you know the particles where you want them so they're not quite so close to the camera and the emitter Y at 50 is fine let's push this up above where we can see it right now so let's go to the position XY and simply drag this down so that these are emitted basically off of our screen which is what we want negative 500 works great now we need the particles to kind of fall through our scene and right now they're not really doing anything so let's solo this layer so that we can see it and since we have no velocity they just kind of sit up there let's go down to our physics settings and what we want to do is twirl down and the air and let's turn on the wind Y we're gonna punch this up till these particles start coming down maybe about 225 or so and if we just kind of scrub through the timeline you can see they come down here and they stop and I think I like the speed that those are falling but they stop a little too early so let's go back here and adjust the life of the particle by twirling down the particle settings and we can increase the life to maybe about 3.5 or so maybe even a little higher four seconds and that way they'll just come down here and stop I also want these to be a little bit smaller so let's decrease the size to maybe 1.5 just a nice light snowfall and increase the size random to about 50 just to give us a little different look and I think we need a little more snow so let's increase the particles per second till you get the look that you want oh, maybe about 800 looks good I also don't want there to be kind of a, a big line here so let's have these fade out over time so we'll go opacity over life and we'll just simply 
drag a curve in here by left clicking the mouse button and just kind of drawing in this box which allows us to create you know whatever curves that we want just kind of a handy little function we just have a nice fade out curve here like that and that way as these things come down they will kind of fade out to nothing and we can change the opacity random up so that they're not all the same opacity just to give us a little more randomness one last thing we want to do with the snow is to make it kind of flutter a little bit so let's go back down to our physics settings and let's increase the spin amplitude quite a bit maybe up to about 70 or so and now as these particles fall down they're going to kind of flutter back and forth now you can adjust this to higher or lower depending on what kind of look you want for your snow I think this looks pretty good for our settings and we'll leave it at that now the other thing you notice is there's no snow at frame zero and it takes it until about four seconds for it to reach all the way down to where we want the snow to be now that is not what I want because I want the snow to be on the entire time so what I'm gonna do is simply grab the snow layer at about four seconds and just drag it down here so that basically where four seconds was is now at frame zero and we can just simply extend this layer out to seven seconds and that would just give us snowfall on all of our frames. All right, let's unsolo the layer and see what we have. Looks like a nice scene, but I think we need a little bit of a camera move to really show off the 3D nature of our composition here. So let's go ahead and create a new null object, and we'll drop it in here above the camera. We're gonna make it a 3D layer and link our camera to it. Now, if you've seen my other tutorials, you know I always like to create a null when I create a camera, if I'm going to be animating it, I just think it's easier to animate and rotate a null than it is a camera and its target. So let's hit R to reveal the rotation. Let's start here at frame zero. And as you can see, at frame zero, we don't have any trees. So let's go hit page down where our trees come on, and we'll just reset our work area one frame in. Let's set a keyframe for the X, Y, and the Z rotation, and maybe rotate this on the X axis just a little bit at the start here maybe negative four and then rotate this on the y-axis to about 23 or so then come down here to seven seconds and rotate this on the y-axis maybe to about negative 15 and rotate this back a couple degrees maybe to negative two or so let's go ahead and make our animation a little bit nicer by selecting our null where we have our rotation values and we'll just grab all of our keyframes select them and hit F9 or right click and choose keyframe assistant easy ease and that'll just smooth out our curves a little bit and make our animation a little bit nicer as a final note you can also introduce some motion blur to all of your 3D layers including your particular layers uh, which will give us just a little more refinement in the look of your comp and there you have it maybe add a nice fade in some Christmas music or sleigh bells in the background and you have a nice starting point for your next holiday project well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about this uh, tutorial or anything with regard to particular trap code, you can find me hosting the trap code forum here at Creative Cal. As always, thanks for watching, and I wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Until next time, this is Michael Park for CreativeCow.net.